Sustainable tillage practices that promote soil health are critically important to the long-term viability of farming. This poses a challenge for many commercial vegetable farms in the Northeast, where a lot of tillage is used to prepare seed beds, control weeds, and incorporate residues. This video explores a variety of tools and techniques that growers and researchers are using to reduce the intensity of tillage while maintaining crop production. Farmers can decide for themselves what practices best fit their operation. In the past 50 years or so, we've, uh, we've focused a lot of our attention on the chemical functions of the soils and we've uh, established a good infrastructure for soil testing and providing advice to farmers about the chemical functions of the soils. But the physical and the biological functions have not been developed very well. And as a result, we've seen many of our soils have become physically and biologically degraded. Farmers have a real challenge with managing the, the physical and the biological health of the soils because traditionally tillage is a very integral part of the cropping system. Yet we now know that tillage also has a strong negative impact on the health of the soil and certainly if tillage is repeated year after year for many decades we see tremendous degradation of the soils. So we need to focus on uh, finding alternatives to traditional tillage systems to build up those soils again and make them productive for our crops. Tillage affects soil health in a complex way. On the short term, tillage provides benefits by loosening the soil and allowing for water infiltration and, and oxygen to enter in, into it. In the long term, however, repeated tillage oxidizes organic matter that's critical for soil aggregation and structure and so what we see after decades of repeated intensive tillage that the soil degrades and becomes dense and compacted. The moldboard plow has been used for centuries to invert the soil. It's a very effective tillage tool, but it also breaks up soil aggregates, oxidizes the organic matter, which is critical to good soil aggregation. It also causes plow pens that reduces root proliferation into the subsoil. The rotavator is a tool that does an excellent job of creating a seed bed and it has been used in vegetable systems for that reason. The concern about the rotavator is that like the moldboard plow, it's a very intensive tillage tool and in the long run it causes the destruction of soil aggregates. The disc harrow in a way performs less intensive tillage, which is, which is good, but it has one particular problem that it causes a lot of pressure at the bottom of the discs, especially when it's uh, offset at a wide angle. And this causes some compaction that results in what we call a disc pan. To build healthy soils, we need to use good management practices. And I look at it as a balance sheet. Tillage and intensive monocrop production are practices that reduce the health of the soil. They degrade the soil. Other practices like cover cropping, good rotations, especially those including sods and legumes, and the addition of organic matter like manure and compost help build the soil. In general, what a farmer wants to achieve is a good balance between those practices. One of the interesting things that we found is that these soil building practices can also mutually reinforce each other. For example, combining reduced tillage or no tillage with cover cropping enhances the benefits of both. <laughs> 